Hello and welcome back. And that is right. Today I want to talk about another crowdfunding NAS that I've heard about here on the channel. We talked about a few recently. Indeed, we did a whole article um, earlier last month and a video as well where we talked about crowdfunded NAS systems and mini server systems over the years. And today I want to talk about the Link Station N1. That's Link Station with a C. Very important because I'm pretty sure Buffalo have got Link Station, the brand. Um, but this is a six bay SSD system. It's very small. A5 scale and it will be going live on Indiegogo I think in the next month or so and although I personally am not a fan of Indiegogo I definitely when it comes to crowdfunding will err uh, towards Kickstarter more than anything else contacted by the company in question Link Plus about this system and asked me if I'd be interested in testing it and as usual as I say in my reply always looking for anything that can disrupt the NAS market to be honest we're seeing a lot more of this open source or open source adjacent uh, levels of systems appearing on the market to challenge turnkey and find out more information about their intended uh, specifications for this device indeed it's already run one and um, a red dot award again they're not the first now that have ever won one of those they're not going to be the last but still you can kind of get a good feeling for it when you look at the system itself it is a two sata ssd for nvme system running on an intel seller on the m5105 cpu there also arriving they stated with 16 gig of memory something i'm not completely sure about also don't agree with this statement for two reasons. One, they are not the first six bay full SSD system. That would be Acer Store with the Flash Store series, but also it's coming, not coming. But nevertheless, they are going to be heading over to Indiegogo in September. So I thought it would be worth talking about them a little bit here on the channel and whether you guys think I should test this system or err away from it for a while. Now, as it's running on that Intel Celeron uh, CPU, those M2 NVMEs, they're not going to be full speed. They're almost certainly going to be restricted to three times one on each of those. And the SATAs, they're obviously going to be restricted to SATA 6 gig. So do bear in mind, although we're looking at an NVMe SSD flash system, we are still running within the confines of that Intel seller. Now, they also state that they have, they've got wireless connectivity built in with Wi-Fi 6 with several antennas built within the chassis for wireless connectivity and Bluetooth, but I'm not too fussed about that one, if I'm honest. Um, they've also got 2.5 gig on the rear of the system alongside US, uh, sorry, HDMI and USB 10 gig connectivity intended for the device as well. The chassis, there is a color change as well available option there's two different variants uh, this is the red dot award there on screen to give a bit more information in the right images about it there so you can see a little bit more but again there's not a huge amount to go on not a lot of images kind of looks like an old vcr to me um i think aesthetically it's very unique uh, i'm not completely bought over by the design at this stage i'll say at least um and that's really it in terms of the software one of the things i don't seem to state too much on this page is the software in question, which they've informed me is going to be Unraid. It's going to arrive with Unraid on board, and on further questioning with them, they're telling me that it will be a full license of Unraid on there included. So those of you that were looking for a turnkey now solution with Unraid on board, this may be very desirable to you, but just bear in mind, I would test and see the legitimacy of that included license with it, and it's not just going to be the standard 30-day trial. Now, apart from that, the system does sound quite intriguing to me because compact SSD uh, NAS systems, there's something of a vogue for them. QNAP went down that road with the NAS book series. And even if we look at things like that store actor that we've been talking about on the channel every month, that is a system that although it has five bays of hard drive storage, a lot of users are still quite drawn on the inclusive M2 NVMe storage. I asked them about the uh, power consumption and noise level of this device. Unfortunately, they couldn't give me any figures on that, but they did state that the system does have a small internal fan. So it's probably going to be a very silent fan, but nonetheless, this isn't going to be a truly silent system. Which kind of brings us on to the whole thing about Indiegogo, because the problem with a crowdfunded NAS... Uh, particularly when you're looking at devices which when they talked about the pricing of this they said they're aiming for around two between 250 and 500 dollars with different configurations but of course all of this will be played out more precisely when in when it is listed on indiegogo i will say my main beef when it comes to anything on indiegogo and i am working on a video at the moment talking about nas uh, projects that took place on indiegogo is one thing it is this the flexible goal tag whenever you look at things like kickstarter kickstarter has very much a black and white 
um, you know, hit your goal or get no money policy. And although you can set a project on Indiegogo to have those settings, most companies go ahead with flexible goals. And that means that at the end of the time, if it's a campaign for, you know, a target of two grand and after 30 days they've hit a grand, they get to keep the grand, which isn't to everyone's liking, especially my own. But on a counterbalance of that, we have to at least highlight, and I'll mention this in my video soon, brands like IOSafe make their first bits of noise on Indiegogo. IOSafe, an enormous company now. We've reviewed them on the channel. We know their product stands the test of time. And as you go through the comments and the updates for this uh, this campaign, you can see that they clearly did this to get some exposure, which succeeded. So that would mean that the Link Station M1 might be one of those projects. But it's still nonetheless, I wanted to talk about it on the channel because there's just simply not enough crowdfunded NASs that succeed. And the ones that do tend to do very well. We can look at the pie boxes that we've seen, of which there are many out there. And if we go through that list that I mentioned earlier on and look for all these different concepts, some of them are really, really impressive. Some of them did remarkably well. So it's not impossible that the Link Station N1 could do well as a crowdfunded NAS. Again, it needs something special. I'm surprised they didn't scale it up a bit with an i3 processor at the very least. But we'll have to wait and see. But I just wanted to sort of talk about this a little bit to gauge some opinion with you guys and figure out whether it is worth me pursuing this and doing some testing here on the channel. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Stay tuned, as I say, for an Indiegogo NAS special that I'm working on at the moment, as I say. And apart from that, there'll be links in the description to all of the pages I've talked about today. And hopefully when the uh, Indiegogo project does go live, we'll link to that and we can have a good old discussion there in the comments. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. And apart from that, have yourselves a lovely week.